What's up YouTube? Today I want to go through Serum's Clip Launcher and explain to you why I think it is such a great feature. Anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So I'm sure you know by now, Serum has this Clip Launcher built in, which is kind of like a sequencer on steroids. It allows you to sequence the notes that you want, it allows you to loop them in various ways, and it also allows you to create modulation for your sequences, which is, I think, really, really cool. One of the other really great features is we have access to MPE parameters directly within the Serum uh, sequence editor. So regardless of whether we have a MPE compatible controller or whether our DAW even supports it, we have the ability to create these kind of more complex sounds just directly within Serum, which is really cool. So. The simplest way of doing that is to just is to just create a note. Let's just make it a bit longer. And then if we click over here, it opens up this curve editor, which is kind of similar to Ableton and Bitwig's pitch bend. And that allows you to actually bend the notes in various ways. We can also then add expression uh, X and Y to create MPE for specific notes, which is insanely cool. So just to keep things simple for this video, I'm gonna create a really simple lead pattern here, kind of like an acid lead sound. So here, what I like to do with these, let's just say, for example, remove, here where the notes go high up, we can remove the second note and just drag this one a little bit longer so we have more legato type stuff going on here. And let's just carry that on like this. This one we can leave, and then this one, let's go up one. So we're gonna do pitch bends like this. And then with these ones, we don't have to go all the way back down to the root, we can kind of go to this, the fifth. And if we hold Alt, it allows us to create a bend in the curve. Okay, let's go ahead and create some velocity differences here. So I actually wanna select these notes, any of the notes that like aren't the accent note, and we can just reduce the velocity a little bit like this. So here we added this parameter expression Y. What we can do is we can go into the matrix here and we can set up a modulation for uh, expression Y and send this to pan. So we don't have to make it so drastic, we can kind of just do a bit of modulation. Just to give it some movement, and we can also set the velocity to the level of this oscillator. Okay, let's just create a filter here, just so it's not so repetitive. Wow, 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 wow,
So I really love using this as a kind of sketch pad. And from here, I will just hold Alt and duplicate these clips. And we can go in and kind of create, we can go in and create several different variations of that clip to kind of either craft it to perfection or to just create various different uh, parts that we can then use in the track. So for example, here, we can take some of these notes and we can take some of these notes and move them up an octave or to different notes in the scale. So let's go through all of these settings over here. So this allows you to save this these different clips and recall them, which you can then save into a bank. So if you load up 12 different clips, you can save that as it, an entire bank. The length over here governs obviously how long the clip is. So if you want a longer clip, you can use this over here, or you can actually just zoom out, you can make it a longer clip like this, then you zoom out and then you can keep editing that way. What I like to do is to create uh, polymetric sequences. So instead of, you know, on the one or two or three, you have it like uh, on the three over four. So it loops this part and it won't actually loop exactly the same twice. Does that make sense? <laughs> And you can like even set it to like an off number to get some interesting kind of sequences. So here I just actually transposed the notes here. This is something that I often use in combination with the clip launcher. So this track is in G, I think. So, and the sequence we've written is in C. So we can actually just transpose it like this up by seven. And now the sequence should be in G. So it should fit the track technically. <laughs> And the reason I do it here rather than transposing individually sequences is because now we can jump between them and they'll always stay in key, right? Okay, so if you don't like the transposing method, you can also use this over here, KB span. You can set this to mono, and then if you send it a G from your MIDI controller, or actually on a MIDI clip, then it'll transpose the sequence to G. So you can use this, you know, if you have maybe just octaves, you can use this kind of like an arpeggiator. Let's say, for example, I'm just going to make it like these three, like this. <laughs> That's actually pretty cool. Then there's also poly, which is similar, but allows you to layer several of the sequences over each other. And then offset, which is really interesting. Instead of changing the transpose based on the notes that you 
send it, it plays from a different start point of the sequence. So you can use this to kind of loop different parts of the sequence, which I think is really, really cool. I think here we have to set this to retrig, though. Yeah, we have to set this to retrig so that it retriggers whenever we send it a MIDI note. And then the offset, you see this little blue icon at the top here. When we change the note, that icon changes position and the start point of the melody changes. I really, really like this because it kind of presents a new way of playing in your sequences, right? You can kind of create simplish melodies and then kind of jam it to the point where it kind of sounds a lot more human than sequencing it, right? Really, really cool. And then we have transpose, which is similar to this transpose, but it's per clip, right? So you can transpose one of the clips up 12 or whatever note you want. Um, 12 is obviously per octave. And then we have the modes. So this obviously governs the play direction. So whether it's forward, reverse, pendulum, which is forward, then reverse, then forward, then reverse, random, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The time would govern like how quickly it randomizes. So for example, if we set it to random and we set it to one over 16, then every note, it will jump to a different part of like a different part of the play position, right? And then rate determines the play speed of the clip, so you can speed it up or slow it down. Something really interesting here is we can actually turn off BPM and now this is synced to the tempo, but it calculates the milliseconds. So we can, the tempo is still relevant, but from here we can modulate it, you know, to kind of like slowly speed up an arpeggiated sequence or something. I know that's a pretty common technique um, in build ups and stuff like that for Cytrons to have like a simple melody going and then it speeds up and speeds up and speeds up. Okay, so then launch quantize, this basically governs, you know, when you uh, use this launch mode. So for example, let's set this to mono. We can set this to uh, one over four, and then when we hit it, it's gonna wait till the next kick to actually start the trigger. Uh, let's set it a bit higher so you can actually see, obviously, like what's happening. Let's set it to two bars. I'm gonna hit it now. So that's cool because it can kind of quantize it to the track BPM. So if you're playing like a live set or something like that, you can set it to quantize on the bar. And so you can kind of just go mad and it's always going to be in sync, which is pretty sick. Okay, so note gate basically determines... Okay, this has to be... Uh, it's it's launch quantizer sync to the note gate, so that governs when you tr when you lift the note, it stops the sequence as opposed to finishing the sequence. And then velocity trigger. This basically uses the velocity input to multiply here. If you use a low velocity note, the entire sequence will be adjusted based on this. So this will basically be a multiplier or the velocity's incoming signal. And then we also have a record which allows us to record notes 
live. So we can hit record like this. And we can also then select them, click, and then quantize so that they'll all snap to the beat, which is really cool. Okay, so let me show you my favorite feature out of all of this is clicking here and saying lock module. And then let's say, for example, set this to the track. So let's say uh, transpose it to seven, and then let's lock this parameter. Now this allows us to cycle through presets. Those arpeggiators and transposition settings will all remain the same. And we can kind of go and audition a bunch of different sounds now that we've kind of chosen a melody to go with. So I'm gonna use one of my older uh, Serum 1 packs and just run through a bunch of sounds. Reason being is like none of these, ha none of these have ops and stuff attached because Serum 1 didn't have any ops. So it's uh, a good opportunity to use these again with a system that has um, arpeggiators. <laughs> I could go on forever. Anyway, that about sums it up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, if you want to support me, the best way to do so is either having, heading is either heading over to my Patreon or checking out some of the stuff that I have for sale, including the Serum 1 pack, which obviously works in Serum 2 uh, that I just showed you. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. See you guys next time. Bye.